Hi there boys and girls, it's Miss Logan here, back with a little more science for you this week. Um, this week's lesson is to discuss and create our own classification key. Um, now that term might be familiar to you, it's something that we definitely did in year four, um, and it should um, tie in nicely to your lesson that you did last week uh, about Carl Linnaeus. So I want you to first of all have a think. What do you think a classification key is um, and what do you think it's used for? So you might want to pause here, have a little think. Where have you heard that before? What is it used for? Okay, and a classification key is a way of organizing and identifying objects such as organisms. So it's often used uh, for living things, all types of organisms, plants, animals, um, and it's a way of organizing and also identifying these objects. So especially when new creatures are discovered, that is what they will go to, those classification keys. So the first little activity we've got for you here, um, it's actually on the website. Um, there is a work for uh, lesson input that you can access and it has all of the things that you're going to need for today's lesson so it would be useful to have that up. Um, what we're going to start with and all three of them are on that first page. Um, if you want to print it out that's fine or you can just simply have a look and match them up in your book. But we're going to be doing some vocabulary work. Um, so I want you to match the words to the definitions. So we've got omnivore, carnivore and herbivore and the definitions we've got are an organism that eats animals or plants organism that just eats plants or an organism that gets food from killing and eating other animals. So you might want to pause here, have a quick think and match them up using lines or if you're doing it in your book that's fine, you can just write them out. And once you're done that we'll have a look at the answers. So an omnivore is of course an organism that eats plants or animals. Carnivore, kill eat other animals and a herbivore gets all their energy from just eating plants. So hopefully those were the answers that you came up with. The next page has three new words. We've got vertebrae, invertebrate, and classify. And your definitions here, the process of arranging organisms into groups based on similar characteristics. An organism which has a vertebral column or spine. The spine is not just one bone, it's made up of several small bones. And the last one is an organism that does not have a backbone or skeleton inside its body. And that's a really key word, inside its body. Uh, for example, insects, spiders, worms, snails, clams, crabs, and squids. Um, so of course, some of these do have a skeleton, but it's on the outside of their body. For example, crabs, they have an exoskeleton. So that's an important distinction. So have a think and match up those ones if you want to pause here and do that. Hopefully the first one was quite obvious, it's the process of arranging organisms into groups, that is to classify, which is of course where classification key comes from. Um, the organisms that do have a spine are called vertebrae, and the ones who do not have one are called invertebrae. So again, that does include those exoskeletons such as, such as crabs or snails. So hopefully those are the ones you came up with. Um, and actually, I've just included, and this is on your um, sheet here as well, oops, um, just some links if you're still a bit unsure about the whole vertebrae, invertebrae um, differentiation. I have included these links on the sheet that you can download on the school website. Um, they're just really quick videos that just explain it a little further if you're interested. And our last set of definitions. So. This one can be quite difficult, um, so you want to have a think. We've got bird, fish, reptile, mammal, and amphibian. So six different types um, of organisms here. And then you need to decide which ones have gills, lay eggs, and wet scales, which ones have feathers, beaks, and eggs, which ones give birth to live young and produce milk. Um, then we have one that can live on land or water, they have a vertebrae, moist skin, and they lay eggs. Examples include frogs, toads, and salamanders. And the last one is dry, scaly skin instead of hair or feathers. They do lay eggs, such as, and examples include snakes, lizards, turtles, etc. So have a think which definition matches each of these. And it's one of those where you can do um, process of elimination. So do the ones you know and see which ones you are left with. So you can pause here and do that. 
And hopefully the ones you came up with are the organisms that have gills, lay eggs, and have wet scales is, of course, a fish. Feathers, beaks, and eggs is, of course, a bird. Uh, animals that give birth to live, young, and produce milk, those are mammals. So that would include humans, of course. Um, these ones can live on land or water. Now, these ones might be the ones that you're, you're sort of stuck between. They're the tricky ones. But you have to think frogs, toads, and salamanders, they live in the water early in their life. And then later on, they sort of crawl out and live on land. Um, and those are amphibians. Um, and actually, that's what the word amphibian means, to go sort of back and forth between land and water. Um, and that leaves reptiles, those snakes, lizards, turtles, etc. So they have dry, scaly skin. Okay, so hopefully those are the ones you came up with. If not, you can have a look at those now. Right, so that is our vocabulary sorted. We're now going to get on to the classification key. Um, and it's quite important that you remember these definitions and, and have them somewhere with you because when it comes to making your own classification key later, you are going to need to use those terms in order to classify the, the animals. So here we have an example of one. Um, hopefully this looks familiar to you. You would have seen this uh, lower down in the school. You can see it starts with a question at the top and each question has a yes or no answer, which then leads to more questions. Okay. Um, at the bottom, these one, two, three, four, five, six sections, of course, correlate with the six animals that you have here. Um, so these questions have been done for us. The first one says, does it have wings? We have yes and no. So what I would do is I'd first look at my animals that I have here and I would sort them into two sections. Which section here on the left? Yes, it does have wings. So I'm going to move all of those that do have wings over to the left. So I've got my duck and my butterfly. And then on the no side, they don't have wings. I've got my gorilla, starfish, red squirrel, and cobra. So I've put those into those two sections. Now this one, I'm going to go over on this side because it's quite short. Does it have a beak? Yes or no? So I've got a duck and a butterfly. That means, does it have a beak? Yes, of course, that is the duck. That is where I'm going to write duck. Does it have a beak? No, again, I've only got two on this side that I've already sorted. That leaves the butterfly to go here. Okay, and if you work your way backwards, it should describe the creature that you've got there. So if I'm looking at the butterfly, it doesn't have a beak, but it does have wings. So you should be able to look and think that is describing it accurately. Great, so I've done those two. Now let's move over to the no side. So that is these creatures here. Does it have wings? No, none of them do. Does it have a head? Well, if I'm looking at the four of them, only one doesn't have a head and there's only one section over here. So that means that, that starfish is already sorted there. And what you might want to do as well is sort of put a little tick when you've done it. So I've done these ones to make sure you're not using them twice. Um, great, so the rest of them don't have wings, they do not have wings, and they all have heads, so we're on the right track here. Does it have feet? So, cobra, red squirrel, and gorilla. We've got the cobra does not, so I'll move that over here, but the red squirrel and gorilla do. And if you look, does it have feet? No, there's only one section there, and that is the section for the cobra. Um, and I'm going to tick that off. Finally, we've got the gorilla and the red squirrel left, and the question is, does it have a tail? Now, the red squirrel does have a tail. I'm gonna put that one under yes, and the gorilla does not have a tail. Okay, so we've got there all of your animals filled in, and again, it's useful to go through and check to make sure they are all accurate. So the red squirrel does have a tail, it does have feet, it does have a head, and it does not have wings all of that accurate. So you should be able to sort of follow your questions back, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and it should be accurately describing it. Okay, so those are sort of talking about specific features of the creatures, which is absolutely fine. Um, but again, there are other ways that we could be using this vocabulary from earlier. Um, things like vertebrae and vertebrae, mammal, fish, reptile, things like that can be included as well. So here we've got a slide just talking about what we could include when we're creating our own classification key. And again, I have included this um, on the sheet that's on the website for you to reference um, as, as you're doing it. So you don't have to have the video open. 
So you need to look at all the data that you are classifying. You need to look at everything. It might require a, a little bit of research if you're not overly familiar with the animals that you're working with, and that's absolutely fine. You're only able to use yes and no questions. Um, if it's not a yes or no question, you're not going to be able to use that as part of the classification key. There's not really any room for other answers. You need to include the name of each organism. Um, and as you come to see the activity, it's also possible for you to include a picture as well. You need to use that scientific vocabulary we discussed at the beginning of the lesson, and it needs to be organized clearly. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to be doing, as I said, is creating our own. And I actually think that the most difficult part of creating your own is coming up with the questions. I think, I think we could all really comfortably do uh, this sort of an activity following the following the questions ourselves but what I think is the challenge and what really sets us apart from what we did in year four is the fact that you need to come up with it on your own so I've got one here that I've done um, I've, you start with one question and each question needs to have a yes or no answer and those answers need to either lead to another question or an animal Okay, so each it can't just sort of have any loose ends or, or dead ends. It needs to lead to either yes or no and a new question or yes or no and then the animal itself. So I've tried to use um, some of the vocabulary that we had at the beginning of the session. So my first question is, is it a mammal? So if we think back to what is a mammal, where was that one? Here it is here. A mammal is an organism that gives birth to live young and it produces milk. Another thing about mammals is they often have hair or fur. Not all the time, but they often do. Now, we could use process of elimination here. If we're not sure which ones are mammals, well, we can look at some of them and think, hmm, not sure about the lion. Is the puffin a mammal? Well, the puffin's a, t a bird. We know that. It has wings, it has feathers, it lays eggs. We know that's not a mammal. So that is going to be on the no side. Okay, that's not a mammal. Um, a snake, we should know, is a reptile as well. Um, it definitely doesn't have hair or fur. It doesn't give birth to live young. It lays its eggs. So that is going to be in the no side. Both foxes and lions do give birth to live young. They both produce milk and they both are covered in hair or fur. So those would make those the mammals. Okay, so we sort of have a dividing line here. We've got the mammals and we've got non-mammals. Okay, so let's look at the, um, let's look at the non-mammals first. So in the no side, I've then asked another question. Is it a bird? Quite simply, is it a bird? So yes, the puffet is a bird. I'm going to move that over there. And no, that will be the snake over here. Okay, so quite simple. Is it a mammal? Is it a bird? And when you have a variety of animals like this, it's quite easy to differentiate them in that way. Um, so now for the mammals that we've uh, identified here, my next question is, is it a carnivore? Now this might be something that you are not familiar with, um, if it's a carnivore or not. So it might be something that you need to do a bit of research on. Um, and if you do that research, you will find that lions are carnivores. They do um, hunt and kill their prey. Um, foxes are actually considered omnivores. Um, they eat a variety. They do hunt um, and eat small, small mammals and animals and things like that. But they also do eat um, plants. So they are considered an omnivore. That would make the lion a carnivore, put it over here, and it would make the fox not a carnivore because it's an omnivore. Okay, so as you can see, I've used some of that vocabulary here um, to answer those questions. And again, it can be really quite simple. Is it a mammal? Is it a bird? When it comes to mammals, you're going to have to be a little bit more creative. I found this one the trickiest of all the questions, um, and you might have to do a little bit of research on that, which is absolutely fine. Um, so here we have an example that you can try. And again, this is on, if you scroll down, um, it is on that sheet there. Again, you don't have to have this printed off. You could just copy this onto a bit of paper and you've got your four um, animals here. We've got a lionfish, a pigeon, a tortoise, and a pig. Uh, they're all very, very different. So hopefully that you can find using that vocabulary from the beginning of the lesson, it's actually not that, um, not that tricky to differentiate between these. So you might want to pause here and try this on your own and you can use that template that I've included on the website or just draw this on your own. So pause there and give that one a try. Um, and do remember that once you're done to go back and check, make sure, um, like with this one, 
lion is a carnivore and it is a mammal. So that's worked out. No, the fox is not a carnivore, but it is a mammal. The snake is not a bird or a mammal. The puffin is a burb, bird, not a mammal. So make sure that you do go back and sort of check, check your answers. Make sure that it does make sense moving its way up the key. So give that a try. I'm not going to um, sort of mark that one with you guys because there's a variety of different ways that you could have classified these. Um, but hopefully when you go back and check, you'll see that you've, you've done it correctly. So now we've got onto the task. And again, I have included this on the sheet that will be on the website. Um, you're going to be creating your own, okay? We've included some words here that we'd like you to use. Uh, carnivore, herbivore, invertebrate, invertebrate. Um, that is for bronze. Silver is including even more of those. Um, once you've completed that, Gold wants you to look up what these two words mean um, and use those as well. So we've not touched on exoskeleton a great deal. I've sort of mentioned at the beginning. And also what does bioluminescent mean? Okay, so two, um, two excellent scientific words here for you to look up the meaning of and actually include those in your classification key as well. Okay, so that is your task. You're going to create that. You might need a fairly large piece of paper um, they tend to get quite big, these classification keys, especially because you do have um, quite a big selection of animals that you can use, which I'll show you here. You do not have to use all of them, but it would be great if you did. Um, and I would recommend A3 paper if you can. If not, you can maybe stick two A4s together because they do get quite large. Um, you can print these out and use those as it as part of it to stick them right on, but you don't need to. You could just write the, the, the words down, which you could copy off of here. So you do not need to print any of this off. Okay, so that is your task for this week. Um, hopefully that you find that okay. Um, just a little bit of information here at the end. Moving or learning on, did you know that a classification key is also known as a dichotomous key? So deflecting on what you've learned so far, do you agree or disagree with the statement? Justify your response. So first of all, you're going to need to look up what does this mean? What does this section in red mean? And then you need to read this statement in blue. Knowing that classification keys has had a minor impact on our understanding of the world. Do you think it has been just a minor sort of discovery? A minor tool, a minor impact on our understanding of the world? Okay, so that is sort of your challenge. You're moving your learning on. Um, and we've got some other information here. Um, the keys have been integral to the improvement of our knowledge in the world that we live in. Um, and we've got our good friend who we learned about last week. Whoops. Uh, Carl Linnaeus here. Get rid of this. Um, he created the first version of the classification key in 1737, and it could be universally to classify living things and organisms. And he introduced some of the words that we use today. So it was actually Carl Linnaeus who first came up with these words, like mammals, birds, amphibians, fish. Um, so we do, we do owe a lot to him in the way of how, how we look at the world. Okay, and just a little reflection section here for you once you finished it. What challenges did you face? How did you overcome them? And also, this is really important, what was your top tip when creating a classification key? So if you were to leave sort of a bit of advice for um, other children in the class who are going to complete this or children next year who might do this, what is your top tip? What is something that you wish that you'd known at the beginning that would have helped you throughout the process? Okay, so that's it for today. As I said, please make sure you've looked on the website to find uh, this document here, which has all the things that you're going to need throughout the lesson. Um, and I hope you enjoy that. So get working on your classification key, boys and girls, and I'll see you next time.